I am still a photographer. My first approach to the post-production was as a 3D lighting artist. At the first, I created some B-movies and some video clips, music, vi music video clips. Then I started creating some commercials and running dailies for Fury Films. Then when the digital intermedia uh, starts, we become a, uh, uh, the studio bought uh, a best light. Then I, I moved from one studio to the other, and right now I am part of, of Oxido, which is based in Mexico City. Uh, uh, we work with the, at the top high end commercials and fewer films there. Uh, we, we, we work with, the, with Alfonso Cuarón's Roma. We, we did all the image uh, acquirement, all the pipeline to the distribution for the studio, to VFX and editorial. Uh, I, was the, I was Alfonso Cuarón, daily colorist there in Mexico. He came two or three times a week, sometimes more, to review the material. And we set some things to see how it will gonna work, uh, gonna work at the end in the, in, at the VFX. Uh, finishing. Uh, we have like three years working in HDR. Uh, the first thing that we did was a demo for f uh, for HBO. And that was a very interesting process because was material that was not thinking in about th to, to work to be at HDR, but as it was F65 and X F55, uh, they were prepared. So. We did that experiment that was amazing. Then we stepped forward and we, we made all the post-production and the grading of Casa de las Flores, a show for Netflix. And we are also working in a series that names Monarca from Netflix. It is a Lemon Films, a Mexican company, and Salma Hayek and Netflix, they are the producers. Something that I have been doing with the cinematographers, and we made some BLG that will work in the set for putting into the camera some for the, the editorial material to the transcode for the edition. So we, we create this BLG that is a kind of look. You know, it's only primary balance and contrast, only to add some separation and sometimes some look. Then they work with this for on the set and for all the editorial. And they fix it a little in the um, on, on set. And when they came to the final grading, and then, of course, we made the finishing with the cinematographer. But the process ha has become very interesting because we were better and we never start from the scratch. So what, what, what happened is that you use your time in the room to, to, to make things grow creatively and, uh, and aesthetically. Yeah, the, the, the problem that we're working in HDR right now is that the X300 Sony is 32 inches. You, if you are sitting in front of the monitor, nobody else can see it. You have here the cinematographer and here the director. So we put uh, Flanders 55 uh, inches up, so uh, that's the presentation monitor. So I grade it into the, in the X300, and the clients are reviewing in the 55. I was surprised first of the brilliance of the image, not the latitude, that happened 
absurd. I understand that you have all these latitudes. I think the first, the, the first and the common e error is to put things on the edges. So you have these super blacks and these super highlighted images. Um, nobody likes that. What cinematographer is looking is another thing. Uh, if you remember, um, I don't know, like 15, 18 years ago, when they were talking about uh, work with, with video instead of film, and all the conversations went to this point that now it looks, it, it looks too much video. It's the same with, the, with HDR. So everybody was working to fight against the video look and to take images into a more cinematographic texture. And what happened now with, the, with this HDR is we are going to the video look again. So I think the, 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 the most common error is that to try to work on the edges. Uh, I always say you have all this to pick up where do you want to put things. You have all the latitude of the camera and all the, um, the power of the machines to put it wherever you want. Talking about the, um, the requirements that you have for Netflix, you have to follow the steps. So you have to work with ACES. They, they always um, want to work with the new, with the newest one, with the, with the new improvement. So you have to be adjusting that. What we are doing is pushing the production to work with the same color spaces from the beginning to the end, because if not, if you move something in the middle, uh, they are not going to work. For the way that we work with the series, I prefer not to work with glutes. I prefer only to add the uh, Rec 709. What we are doing basically is working with the Rec 709 for the, um, for the um, dailies and editorial and all this material, and then put it into the, to the um, PQ. There are a few films that we are working in P3, thinking in projection, and some in Rec 709 because they are, uh, uh, they, they are going to work in the screen. My, idea, my ideal way to work is exactly, they, they come with the, with the BLGs from the, from the set, I add it to the material, and then uh, we may, I, I like to make the first technical pass, and then the cinematographer came and we start working with, with the look. We have um, the look and we have masks, and we are working layers by, layer by layer. I, I, that's my ideal way to work. But sometimes, um, and when you're working with new, new clients that, that don't have the confidence to work with you like that. You, it's better to work from the scratch. Manuel, one of my assistants, made the first pass. Then I put the, um, the look with the director. And then Fernando, that is over here, he's the one that is uh, matching all the material or, or adding all the looks for the, for the rest of the material. Then I made a review. I made my final adjustments and I present to the, to, to the, to the director. Uh, the most important part of the um, image for me is the gamma. No? That means everything. So it's very easy to control the slope or the toe. So you have to work a lot with the gamma to find the separation and not to make noise, uh, a noisy image. And I, th I think it depends there. It's, it's where I work in my balance, basically, in the gamma. But Every image is different. Uh, something that is going to happen is that everything is going to become HDR. I don't know if tomorrow or in five years. But that's, uh, but that's a discussion that the post-production studios are having right now. Because if you graded something in HDR, you have to give a pass for SDR or made an automatic pass to give your SDR 
uh, the, the SDR archive to, to see it correctly in the televisions. Do you remember the um, problem when you, when we start with the HD and the question were exactly, exactly the same? So it's worthless. Why am I working in an HD commercial if TV is SD? Uh, we are grading Casa de las Flores in HDR and, and Monarch in HDR. And then we work with, the, with Dolby Vision and we make the quick path to take it to SDR. But it works differently because you are getting two archives, two, two different IMF to, to give it to the, to the broadcaster. So they send both images. And when you turn your television, the signal knows exactly what you are saying. So if, it's, if, if it is HDR or SDR, it's not going to happen right now with the commercials. Uh, so it depends where you are doing. Uh, at Oxido, we have three rooms, different monitors, di di different, di different monitors. So we have one with a, um, with a Christie projector that is where we work with for future films, one with a BBX300 from Sony uh, for grading and uh, 55 Flanders for presentation. And we have one with an 85 inches plasma from Panasonic. Uh, that's, it, it, that's amazing for commercials. So, depends on the project, we work on a different room. I love to work with the video grade. All my first pass, I, 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 I do it with the video grade. The sensibility is almost the same as the the, the, the one that you can feel when you were working in a telecine. So I, all my first passes with the, with the video grade, and then I use the film grade to adjust some things like exposure or some contrast. You get a, I, I get a, a natural feeling there, and then we can make some keys uh, to, to make it smoother. Uh, so I work basically with the video grade, the field grade, and, uh, and um, the, hue, the hue angle, and the DQ. What, what Dolby is doing, it's not automatic. You have to adjust some things, and sometimes you have to go out of the Dolby Vision to adjust something else, and then make another, uh, another time the Dolby Vision pass. To, to get better results, but well, I think it's not bad the, that, that approach that I have. I, I like the Alexa, of, uh, of course, I think it's my favorite, but I love the um, skin tone that you get with the Sony. The flesh tone is incredible and you, you get to the ideal very quickly. I don't like the way it handles with the highlights and the slopes are always out of gamut. So best like have a, now a tool, its name is compressed gamut, to put down the gamut so you can handle all the highlights of the LEDs you know, that are super brilliant and they are always out of the gamut. It's not as complex as the, as the color, and talking about matching is, is easier. In color, we are talking, when you look at an uh, uh, image in color, you have to make a balance and work with the, with the colors to find some separation and some integration. And black and white is almost the same, but you are working with contrasts. Uh, with Roma, they made uh, uh, Alfonso made uh, with Technicolor uh, loot uh, that have exactly the contrast and the tone that he was in his black and white image. They, send it, they fix it to our room in our projector in, in Oxido. And so we, 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 we were, I was the one in charge to add the, the loot to the images in the in the, in the room, and then we adjust some contrast. I don't think it's, it's an advantage to get the image in black and white. 
you, you can get it and get, do work in color and then put it back with the put down the saturation and that's uh, a very good beginning uh, if you think that you are going to work in black and white uh, I work in a project that, that the cinematographer made the approach like if he was shooting black and white film he put some yellow filter to get more detail on the on the sky and the blue one to get darker greens in the in the woods <laughs> and and that's that that helps more than i think shooting in black and white give applause to him thank you very much <laughs>